Joshua chapter 21. And I'm just going to read three verses. It's the custom of our church that we stand for the reading of God's word. If that's your custom as well, I'm going to ask you to stand. Joshua chapter 21, verse 43, verse to verse 45. If you have it in your Bible or your smart device, I want you to signify by saying, I have the bread. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. And all of God's people said, on your way to your seat, I want you to testify with strength and power. Shout, I'm in a different place. I'm in a different place. I love the Torah. Uh, so much that if God didn't shift me, I'll preach from it every service. There's so much in the foundation of our Judeo-Christian faith. You can't have Christianity without Judaism. Um, New Testament don't even make sense without a true understanding of the old covenant or what we call the Hebrew Bible. And as much as I love all scripture, there's one scripture that speaks to me in such a strong way. It's Exodus chapter three, verse seven, where the Bible says that Moses had finally created some sort of normality for himself. And all of a sudden, a bush starts talking. And the Lord says to Moses, I want you to leave from where you are. Come out of your comfort. I need you to go to Egypt and give a message to my people. Tell them two things. I have seen their affliction. And I've heard their cry. Now that may not mean nothing to anybody else in here. But have you ever prayed and instead of things getting better, things got worse. It'll make you wonder, did God hear you and does God see you? Because it's already problematic that they are considered chosen by God but yet in captivity. You can be saved and still dealing with captivity. There are times where your chosenness comes into contradiction with your position in your place. That you can be so anointed, but your life don't look like the anointed that you carry. Mm. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, it's complicated. Moses, you have finally embraced it. Where you are is where you're going to be. And now there's a word from the Lord that's going to uproot you out of your place of comfort. I often say you haven't been called by God until you've been inconvenienced by God. I want everybody in this room to say out of your mouth, shout displaced by assignment. Because people sing the songs, but... Just because you sing the song don't mean you worship. <sighs> the song can only be an expression of your worship. The song itself is not your worship. Yeah. God tells uh, Abraham, go take your son up there. And Abraham calls it worship. It's not worship until it costs you something. And the Bible says that Every excuse that Moses had, God addressed it. There's somebody very close to you 
they're wrestling with their assignment. I just want you to touch them gently. Tell them God is eliminating all of your excuses. Mm. Mm. Every reason you're giving why you shouldn't be doing it. God is eliminating all of your excuses. But we'll, as I look closer to the text, and we always talk about um, how Moses had a speech impediment, and so God gave him his brother to be a spokesperson. And he talked about his weakness in comparison to the strength of Egypt, and God addresses it by saying, put your hand in here. You know, I got power over flesh. I got, I got power over the earth, every living thing, and I'm giving you a spokesperson. When Moses finally says, I'll do it, and he leaves the presence of the Lord, the Lord says, oh, one more thing. God addressed the very thing that was the real thing. What was the real thing? He says, Moses, oh, and the people who know what you did, See, what some of us call humility is really fear. Moses did not want to go back because going back means he had a past he had to face. I want you to lay hands on your neighbor's shoulder and tell them your past has no more power. Somebody in this room, you are afraid of walking out the assignment of God because you know you. And there's some things from the past that has the potential to pollute your future. But I come to tell 50 of you that will praise him. God says, I'm shutting doors behind you. And if anything comes back, God said, I'm going to fix it where it ain't got no power. Mm. God convinces him. Am I talking okay? I know I'm talking a little slow. Am I talking okay? The Bible says he convinces Moses to go back. He goes back to obey God, to do what God told him to do. And when he goes to Pharaoh and says, God says, you know, let his people go. And Pharaoh, of course, chuckles and like, who are you? Who is your God? The Bible says when Moses goes to Pharaoh in obedience to God, God runs past Moses and hardens Pharaoh's heart. All right, here. Not the devil. (laughs) God gives Moses an assignment. And then he makes it hard for Moses to fulfill the assignment. And that's complicated for us because we want to make God a flat character. We want to put... God on one shoulder and Satan on the other shoulder and they're in a battle trying to win us. But let me lift to you. God has no rival. God has no equal. Don't ever put Satan on the same level with God. Before Satan even came after Job, he had to come past God. The punishment of Satan is that Satan serves the purpose of God. It ain't nothing going on in your life that is taking God by surprise. Why would God call me to do something and then make it hard for me to do it? It will make you wonder, did you hear what you thought you heard? Because if it was God, it shouldn't be this hard. If if it was God, things would have fell in place. The middle will make you question what you thought you heard in the beginning. Don't y'all look at me in that tone of voice. Be honest with me. It's one thing to start, but that middle, that middle, that middle will make you question everything. You have not been chosen by God until you wish you could give it back. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I wouldn't have never chose this for me. People are jealous of you, but they don't know the price you've had to pay. And they don't know the payments you're still making. If you knew my journey, you wouldn't be jealous, you would be proud. It wasn't Satan. 
it was God. So who do you rebuke when God is behind it? Who do you fight when God is behind it? I need you to grab your neighbor by the hand and tell, tell your neighbor some people were trusted with triumph. But tell them you were trusted with trouble. I'm telling somebody in here today that the only reason why God gave it to you because he knew you would praise him through it. The only reason why God gave it to you because even though he knew you would get in your feelings, it would be enough to make you cry but not enough to make you quit. Anybody can praise him when everything is perfect. But do I got 75 of you in here that will give them in spite of. I don't know what you're doing, but I praise you. I don't know what's happening, but I give the glory. I didn't know it was going to be like this. But though you slay me. <laughs> Somebody look your hands toward heaven and shout, I don't get it, but I trust you. God made it hard. God made it hard. Just because it's hard does not mean it's not God. God made it hard. Why would you make it this hard? If you look at the the faith of Judaism, the God of Israel is different than the religious system of Egypt. <sighs> Egypt had a religious system that was polytheistic, some, some way fused with pantheism. They had a God for everything. Uh -huh. And often what they worshiped is what they saw. The more wealthy you are, the more gods you have. Very similar to Indian culture. When I go to India, get a chance to experience the spectrum of deities that they worship. One time we were coming out of Sudapay on our way back to Hyderabad, and we stopped by the roadside at a store. It wasn't like our convenience store, it was a store. <laughs> And a little boy walked over to me and he started speaking to me in Telugu. And my Telugu is very bad. And I looked at the translator, Pastor uh, Sylvia. I said, what is he saying? Because Pastor Sylvia just said, get away, get away. And I said, no, what did the little boy say? He says, he wants you to give an offering to his God. I said, well, who is his God? He says, you see the little box he's carrying? And the little figurine on the middle of it, that's his God. And he wants you to give an offering to his God. I got stirred up. I did one of them sanctified quickenings. Because <laughs> I looked at it, I said, wow, this little boy is carrying his God. But my God is carrying me. This little boy got to provide for his God. But my God shall supply I come to tell you I don't care what the economy does there will always be provision in Goshen come, some of y'all got stuck last week but I don't care what the economy does there will always be provision in Goshen ain't no deficit in heaven they were polytheistic Fused with some sort of pantheism that was totally different than the God of Israel. Because the God of Israel don't need many gods. The Shema of Israel. Hmm, hallelujah. It's Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear Israel. The Lord our God is one. Hallelujah. It don't take many uh, God's to beat one devil hallelujah he's God and he's God alone mm. hallelujah the scripture says they worship the river 
because the river fertilized their soil. They worshiped the cattle. They worshiped the sun. Every time Pharaoh said no, it gave God an opportunity to destroy something that the Egyptians worshiped. See, you taking it personal. But this ain't about your comfort. It's about God's glory. God will let you go through it long enough to let your situation be documented. So when he brings you out, everybody will know it was God that brought you out. Some of you are mad with God because you didn't prayed and you didn't passed it and it ain't shifted yet. But God told me to tell you by the time he brings you out of this, even the folk that don't believe in you, they're going to believe in your God. There's some people who've been waiting to, for you to fail. But God says, I'm going to promote you right in the midst of the company where they try to write you up and get rid of you. Some of you, God said, I could have healed you last year. But I've let you have enough doctor's appointments. I've let them take enough MRIs. I've let them take enough blood tests and lab work. So when they go back for the next blood work and your blood comes back healed, even your doctor will have to know that there's a healer in Israel. I need about a hundred people in this room that you've been going through it longer than you wanted to go through it. I dare you to give God glory in it. I know there shall be glory after this, but there's some glory that God wants in it. He says, after you have suffered a while and I come to tell somebody in this room, you better put a praise up in this window because your while is almost over. The Bible says that God continued taking down the idols of Egypt through Pharaoh's no. So what Moses thought was failure was really God's display of power. What you thought was failure is really God's display of power. Let me move now. God brings them out. You know God brings them out. God brings them out the same way he brought us out. My God. The same way. And I know how some of you all testify. You take a whole lot of credit for your salvation. I hear how you testify. I gave this up and when I got when I got my life together and you know when I straightened myself out I came to church and God saved me oh you're taking a whole lot of credit for your salvation some of y'all in this room can say God was dealing with you before you got to church some of y'all I'm sorry some of y'all was high and God was talking to you some of you was on some of y'all don't even know how you got home and you realize that God didn't start being good to you once you got saved my soul looks back and wonder come on and some of us we ain't always been saved since we've been saved but he covered us in the middle if you sit there like that you taking God's credit you taking God's credit you taking God's credit this is the Lord's doing how did God bring them out same way he brought us out you cannot say God brought them out because they kept the law. Because the law had not been given until Sinai. So you can't say God brought them out because they kept the law. Well then how did God bring them out? I'm glad you asked. He said, take a lamb, the size of the house. And he said, put it on the side post and put it over the door post. Now you understand if a door is rectangle, that means it looks incomplete. He said, put it on the side, put it over the door. But what about the threshold? He said, no, 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 no. He says, the blood is powerful enough to cover, but too precious to trample over. I know it was the blood. One day when I was lost, 
Jesus died on the cross I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to praise him for the blood how did you come out how did you come out and we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony I brought them out Grab somebody's hand by the hand and pull them and tell them, he brought me out. I didn't have the power to bring myself out. He brought me out. I didn't have enough willpower to change. He brought me out. I was born in dysfunction and I was living in dysfunction. But the blood got in my blood and he brought me out. I dare you to shout for everybody that got your last name. I need you to shout for the blood over your house. I need you to shout for the blood over your siblings. Shout for the blood that's over your children. Shout for the blood that's over your first cousins. I'm making a bold confession. I refuse to lose another family member to the devil. The blood, 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 the blood. Over the doorpost. Over the doorpost. Oh, we got some cute language in this culture, but I need somebody to know how to plead. You can't plead innocent. If you say you're innocent, you're a liar. So if they ask you, how do you plead to your mistakes? Plead the... what David said he said blot out my transgression I studied with an orthodox rabbi Rabbi Pesachwiliki and he was talking to me about the scribes and uh, he took me to one of his friends that was copying a Torah and he said now you see that right there you see that ink blocked right there he said that means he made a mistake right there but instead of getting rid of the whole scroll instead of destroying the whole story I'm telling somebody who's been on a journey but you made an error along the way God said instead of destroying the whole story he said he'll just blot it out when you see the blot you know something happened there but if it was pencil and you erased it you could trace it if it's blotted out all you know is something happened there but you can't trace it and when he blotted it out he didn't do it with ink he blotted it out with his y'all not praising him for the blood loud enough y'all not praising him because if everything would have hit the fan it really would have been bad I want you to take 10 seconds and praise God for what the church people don't know about there you go there it is there it is there it is I said, praise him for what God covered. Woo. Tell somebody he covered my family. He covered my marriage. He covered my children. Woo. Be careful. I almost felt the praise right there. I did. Thank you. you all be seated. Next time we stand, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dismiss. I'm past my time. I set a time for myself. Thank you, Pastor Brady. Thank you, Bishop. Y'all stop. It's Sunday morning. It's Sunday morning. The way you shout ought to tell somebody something. I can't go into details. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. People know the headlines. But they don't know my details. Sometimes you got to dance about the details. One, two, ready, go. Just wanted to see where y'all were at. Because when you think about it, you ain't got to work nothing up. When I think of the goodness of Jesus.
want you to grab hands with one grateful person. Now, in church, we're not forcing nobody to do anything. I want a praiser to get a hold to another praiser. And I want you to look at them and tell them, I don't have time to go into details. Tell them all you need to know is that I was in something that could have destroyed my destiny, but he brought me out. He brought me Y'all stop. I'm apostolic. I can't dance this slow. He brought me out. Some of y'all won't get this theologically But I want you to look at your neighbor Tell your neighbor he brought me out And tell him and on this week He's going to complete my deliverance Everybody didn't get that See the package can leave the factory And the delivery still not be complete But God said this week I'm about to settle you in the place That you were supposed to be last year this time messed up I messed up my I didn't kind of messed up my flow of he's about to complete my delivery he's about to settle you in the place that you were scheduled to be only God Only God can take the hands of time. Y'all don't believe it? See, we've been shouting about the wrong thing. You've been shouting about getting a house, and it's okay to shout about that. But he says, I'm going to give you something that money can't buy you. But 200 of you that will praise him, God says, I'm getting ready to give you time back. He says, I will restore unto you years Years are coming back. Years you wasted. Years you were delayed. Be seated as quickly as you can. Be seated as quickly as you can. Be seated as quickly as you can. Don't scream. Just tell the people beside you. Tell them time is coming back. Time is coming. Come on, send it down your road. Time is coming back. He's about to restore time back to you. He's about to restore time back to you. He's about to restore time back to you. How would you respond if God gave you the last five years of your life back to you? What kind of praise would you give God if he gave you the time back that you wasted in tears? you wasted in depression time that you wasted in the wrong ministry time you wasted in the wrong relationship time. lay hands on somebody's back and push them in the Holy Ghost tell them time is coming back why push
push them. Why I push them? Because I'm pushing you back into your time. I'm pushing you back into your season. I'm pushing you back into the cadence of God. This is a restart. This is a restart for somebody. There's about five people in here. You just need a fresh start. I dare you to take off running right now. Just run, 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 run. There's a fresh start. There's about to, there's a fresh start about to hit your life. Fresh, something new, something fresh, something different, something new, something fresh, something different, something new, hey, something fresh, something different. You better snatch it. This is somebody's restart. You better snatch it. Somebody in this room, you feel like you messed up so bad that you have settled in Egypt. But God came to pull you out. God came to pull you out. I'm going to make an announcement. And when I make this announcement, deliverance is going to hit somebody. There is therefore no condemnation. in the past get it off of you you've been rehearsing your mistakes get it up off for of you He brought them out. But then they found themselves in a continual cycle. I need somebody in this room. You got power with God. I want you to speak to the left and the right of you. Tell them God is breaking cycles. Oh. I'm talking about secret cycles. I'm talking about emotional cycles. Some of you have been apprehended with addictions that the people around you don't know about. But God says he's breaking it off for you this morning. He's breaking it off. The day Prophetess Callaway reached out to me, because that's my sister. I had said, you know, I wasn't taking phone calls, but that's my sister. She called me, I'm going to answer. She called me because I was in my church shut in. I shut in my church every year during that week leading up to Rosh Hashanah for seven days fasting and praying. I don't leave the church. And she called me, she says, I know you are in prayer and fasting. She says, but I needed to call you because my pastors uh, have requested you. She says, they want you to come and minister for Bishop's birthday celebration. The day she called me was the day where the prayer focus was yeah. deliverance. Yes. Don't you know, you can come out of captivity and still need to be delivered. The captivity is the place. But that stuff can still be in you. And some of you have been leading, but you've been leading with the trauma that you came out of. Some of you have been serving, but you've been serving with the trauma. And you have normalized the dysfunction of being on a consistent emotional roller coaster. Hallelujah. But look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I got faith for deliverance. So, so, some of y'all still don't get what I'm saying. Because some of you are not as favored as some of us in this room. Some of us are greatly favored by God. We have something that you don't have. We have something called Amazon Prime. Y'all, some of y'all, y'all got to go through a whole lot of motion before you purchase something. But we who got Amazon Prime... 
all it takes is one click and if we click on that button quickly we will get a notification that the order has been processed and the package is leaving the warehouse I come to tell you I got a notification in my spirit for some of you who've been dealing with something for a long time it's about to be delivered in a short time I want you to take a moment and shout because some of you you're going to have it by Monday you're going to look for it and it won't be there you're going to wait to fall back in depression and it won't be there After 40 years, thank you so much for your patience. After 40 years of being in a cycle, God finally brings them to a different place. And I need to tell you what this different place looks, what it looks like. When they get there, even Manasseh, it's going to be on one half of the Jordan and the half of the tribe going to be on the other. But Manasseh cannot settle. Even though we're here at the promised land, we're not allowed to settle until everybody connected to us has victory over their enemy. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm Bishop, I'm gonna tell you what's hard for me. I'm gonna tell you what's hard for me. Because I've been thrust in this atmosphere that I'm not accustomed to. I'm country. When I say I'm country, I'm from a one stop like town. My mama said we all lived in the same house at one time. Grandma was everybody's babysitter, even whether they paid her or not. My daddy's side of the family raised hogs. And when it was time for them to slaughter hogs, everybody in the neighborhood helped them. Because when it was time for them to slaughter their hogs, we would go over there. I mean, I don't, this place is strange for me because it is hard for me to wrap my mind around the fact that there are some people who can be close to you at the same time hope you fail. There are some people who are good with you as long as you are struggling. But if you ever get a revelation of your identity, after everything you went through, you think they would be happy for you? And so I found out that there are more people I can share my burdens with than I can share my blessings with. Because you got to be careful. Because there's a thin line sometimes between admiration and jealousy. That if they can't be you, they will settle for being next to you. It's not an assassination attempt unless they're close enough to know your patterns. So... I'm looking at this scripture. They says, I can't settle to everybody around me wins the victory. That I'm not okay as long as me and my family are blessed. And your family is in disarray. So I want y'all to test it out. Look at the person beside you. Tell them, I want you to be blessed. Tell them, I want you to have everything God has for you. Come on, tell them, I'm not your opposition. I'm not jealous of you. Tell them, as a matter of fact, my next praise is for what God is about to do for you. Uh-oh, look at y'all. Y'all need some more friends. You need... is this different place God says I'm bringing you into I'm bringing you to a season of answer prayer I'm bringing you to a season of answer prayer and I know some of you have been praying but I want to be a little bit more clear about this different place he says it's not the prayers that you pray God says I'm about to answer the prayers that some of your parents and your grandparents pray. There's somebody, their body is in the grave, but God says, I'm going to keep my promise. 
us to their seed and to your seed, your grandmother's prayers are about to be answered. God keeps his promises to dead men. Only got four points. That was point two. Point three. This is why this place is going to be different. Mm. He says, because you're going to live in houses that you did not build. This word is not for the lazy people. Oh yeah. I, didn't, I ain't got to do nothing. No, no, no. The Lord said, he, you were over here helping everybody else, serving everybody else's vision, undergirding everybody else's goals, taking care of everybody else's wants. God says, while you were over here on assignment, I was building you something over here in promise. I come to tell somebody, you sowed in one place, but you're about to reap in another place. Run over to three people, tell them nothing will be wasted. All right, last one. Last one. Last one. Last one, thank you. Last one. I want you to receive it. How? He says, I'm bringing you into a land that's flowing with milk and honey. Some of you have experienced the sprinkle of God. But God says you're getting ready to experience a downpour. The reason why some of you is hard for you to get excited because you know what it is to be blessed and a door to open. As soon as the door opens, look like something comes and snatches it. God told me to tell you, get ready for the flow. You may not have it all at one time, but it's coming at you consistently. Every time there's a need, it's going to be met. Every time there's a desire, it's going to be fulfilled. You're getting ready for the flow. Do a science project. Put milk and honey together. You will notice that they don't flow well. But the Lord says, I'm bringing you to a season. Where things that did not work last time. Oh my God, I felt that in the Holy Ghost. Something that did not work last time. God said it's going to flow this time. Oh my shit. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, it's going to be everything God said. You're going to be glad you didn't quit. Some of you almost walked away from one of your greatest seasons. But I come to tell you there's one door that God is about to open. And this one door is going to make up for the last three doors that were shut. God says, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. And there's a river that's getting ready to flow in your desert. I want you to grab your neighbor by the hand and say, oh neighbor, I'm in a different place now. What used to depress me can't depress me anymore. What used to make me quit don't make me quit anymore. I'm in a different place right now. I come to encourage somebody. Be not weary in well doing. For in due season, in due season, you're gonna reap if you faint not. Push three people, tell them you better not quit. After all the tears you've cried, out of all the trials you've had, you would be crazy to get this close and walk away from your miracle. I heard Apostle Paul declare, for we reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Lay hands on somebody and say, somebody, everybody connected to me is about to get a miracle. Everybody connected to me is about to get a breakthrough because you're connected when I go in. You're going in.
I come to tell somebody the only reason that it's been so hard the only reason that it's taken so long is because it's going to be bigger than what you prayed for it's going to be greater than what you wanted for who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask a thing and it's according to the power that's still working grab your neighbor and tell your neighbor the power is still on I made some mistakes but the is still on I've had some setbacks but the power is still on yeah 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 I've cried some tears but don't underestimate me just because I'm crying when I start crying that means I'm ready to fight when I start crying I've been to China and I went to Mongolia. I've been to El Salvador. I got a church in Brazil. I preached all over London. I traveled all around the world and I've seen a lot of stuff. But out of all of my travel, there's one thing that I never seen. forsaken no his seed begging for prayer I want you to wrap your arms around somebody tell him he's going to make it up to you it's going to be a different place you ain't going to have to look over your shoulder it's going to be a different place you're going to be able to trust somebody it's going to be in a different Have you ever been in a place in your life where you wanted to feel different but you couldn't force it? And you kept smiling for the people around you so they wouldn't be concerned? Some of you, you went through grief but you, you didn't get a chance to really process it. You just went through it. Because so many people were depending on you. Some of you, you came out, but you still had to deal, you're still dealing with the trauma of captivity. That people think they're close to you, but they, they don't really know you. they're not that close to you. You, you. you are aware of my presentation, not my person. Because I made up my mind, I'll never let anybody else get that close to kid. Don't y'all leave me out here by myself. You know what I'm talking about? But I want you to do this. And the Lord told me to do this prophetic exercise with you. Just put your hand on your back. This position on your back symbolizes everything that has plagued you from the past. Everything that keeps you from embracing a new season. Everything that keeps you from welcoming support. Everything that's keeping you from receiving true, authentic, genuine friendship connection and love what keeps you from perceiving your pastor as your pastor some of you are in a new season but you never unpack your luggage you're just waiting for something to happen and because something always happens and so when it happens my bags are already packed 
But the Lord says he's about to transfer what you've been carrying. <sighs> when you do this prophetic exercise, I want you to get ready to blow your shofar. And the shofar is in your own voice. In Israel, every time they come into a new year, come into a new season, they blow the shofar. They release a sound. Because defeat has a look, but victory has a sound. I want you to get ready. God told me to tell you, whatever has been on your back, he's about to shift it. Whatever has been on your back, he says, I'm going to put it under your feet. One, two, three, do it now, do it now. Step on, step. Hey! Come on, out of your belly. years all of it all of it come on all of it Bible said Philip was in one place and then God picked him up and dropped him yes. in another place I feel the Holy Ghost of God right now when I tell you there's a massive breakthrough that's about to hit your row no 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 I'm serious hear me hear me hear me in the next 30 seconds, there's a wind of God that's about to sweep up and down your road. The Lord told me to tell you, he's about to do you what he did with Philip. He's about to catch you up. Hold up, hold up. Hear me. Some of you, you've been behind schedule. But God says he's about to drop you Everybody shut up. In the middle of your prophetic assignment. Just because time has gone by, God has not changed his mind. Somebody lift your hands and shout, I don't deserve it, but I still want it. Everybody that got a prayer language, lend it to the atmosphere. Because God is about to transport us. Hold on, God is about to transport. Get ready. Some of you, your spiritual gifts are laying dormant in your belly. But I come to stir up every prophet. Everybody who's been hiding in the cave. Every dreamer, God is stirring you up again. All right, I'm just trying to create the atmosphere for the wind that's coming. Oh, somebody, you watching online from home right now, but God is visiting you right now. Oh, shit, hey, 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 Penetrate the atmosphere. Oh, I need somebody who has power with God. You got the Holy Ghost. Now I want you to grab hands with the people on your row now. Woo. There ought to be a witness. There, are, there should be a witness. Shh. I want you to confess with your mouth. Shout, God is about to catch me up. I come to tell somebody the last two years are getting ready to be added back to your account. 
opportunity you felt like you missed, a door you feel like you missed, I come to declare to you, Holy Israel, God says, I'm about to drop you into a different place. He says, I'm about to show you what the warfare was really about. You're about to find out why the devil tried to destroy your marriage. You just get ready to find out why the enemy was attacking your children. You took it personal, but God told me to tell you it ain't personal. It's promise. This is bigger than you. God says, I'm about to do something in you that's get ready to set up the next three generations of your family. Here we go. Here it is. Here it is. When I count to three, I want you to shout with everything in you and a wind up the wind of God, the Ruach of God is going to blow in this place. One, two, three, shout. Some of you are taking it personal. You've been caught, getting caught up in your emotions and in your feelings. The Lord says, I want to get you out of your feelings and get you in your faith. This is about what you're carrying and what's coming behind you. I'm not standing here because I grew up with a, a, a daddy that was a preacher. If that's your testimony, that's a good testimony. But my daddy was a drug addict. My grandfather was an alcoholic. And his mama had 23 children by several different men. But the blood got in the blood. If you got a family member here, will you go grab them real quickly? If you got a family member, and if you don't have a family member here, you know how we do in the, in the South. We got cousins everywhere. 
So you just find somebody and say, hey, cuz, hey, cuz. We're going to break every demonic system. I want you to take a moment and lean over to your cousin, lean over to your family member and identify with them the things in the blood that need to be broken. Come on, tell them. What cycle is in the blood that needs to be broken? I'm declaring that the cycle of divorce is being broken in our bloodline. Toxic, toxic marriages. The spirit of promiscuity and drug addiction and alcoholism. The spirit of rebellion and pride. The spirit of jealousy is being broken. I'm coming. At, oh, shit. When God brought Israel out, he brought the whole house out. I says, when God brought Israel out, he brought the entire house out. I'm going to say this. This is going to be real strong. And when I say it, some of you are going to be afraid to say it. And if, you, if, you, if you're afraid to say it, don't just say stuff because the preacher says say it. If you don't have faith for it, you can leave it. But I'm, I want you to say this behind me if you got a person of faith. Say, I declare God is eradicating the word cancer out of my bloodline. Somebody dance for your bloodline, right?
you and the devil had a tussle, but you won. I'll see you on the other side of this. I'm in a different place now. I'm in a different place. 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 It took me a long time to get here. I'm in a different place. I won't apologize for what I suffered to have. I'm in a different place. I'm in a different I'm in a different we too tight but I need some men in here that will run down to the front and dance for the men in your bloodline I want you to dance till every one of them that's incarcerated get delivered every one of them that's dealing with drugs today
Somebody testify and tell them my children won't have my same fight. I'm winning this for everybody that's connected to me. High five somebody, tell them you just got set up for victory. Y'all go to your seat, go to your seat. I'm finished. Ho! Thank y'all for being so kind to me. Thank you so much. This is my first time here. I'm sorry. This is my first time here. Thank you. This is my first time here. If you praise him right, he'll speed up the process. If your faith and your praise ever get aligned, whatever's been in your head, he'll put it in your hand. Touch three people, tell them I'm working on something. I'm not dancing just to be dancing. I'm working on something. I want. Oh. I'm true. the sound. Oh. Tell him. By the next time I see you, Bishop, you're going to have a different testimony. He did more than I ever These people, these people standing up like they're expecting something. I, I'm telling you, when I walked in here this morning, I was uh, very physically tired because I've been in church every day for over two weeks. But there was such an expectation in the atmosphere that it woke something up in me. Just tell somebody, tell them, don't miss it, don't miss it. Some of you, it's been hard for you to believe again because believing is costly. But those who trust in the Lord 
never. will never be put to shame. Never. And somebody who just survived the ugly season, the Lord says, for your shame, I'm going to give you double. 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 Just look at somebody and say, neighbor, I don't know what it took for you just to make it to November 2024. But tell them, for everything you have to endure, double is coming on you. Double is coming on you. Them that sow in tears. Those who sow in tears. But those who sow in tears, you're about to reap in joy. And if you think I'm dancing too much, let me dance half the time I cry. If you think, if you think my praise is ridiculous, you would have to know how ridiculous my situation was. Wonderful people. Somebody shout sound travels. You need to know this because I felt in the Holy Ghost when y'all started dancing for your family members. The Lord says He started touching people who live in other states. Some of you gonna get phone calls and text messages today. Your sound travel. Your sound just went in rooms your feet have not walked into. Your sound just went in spaces. Just look at somebody, just go like this. He gave them supernatural provision. They called it, what is this? Some of you get ready, because in the next 72 hours, you're about to have a divine surprise. I said, you're about to have a divine surprise. I want to get out of here. I am way past my time. And I want to thank y'all for being kind because guest preachers on a Sunday morning and then you keep the people longer than this. But just tell your neighbor, you saw me dance today. Tell them I'm coming back next Sunday with the receipts. Shifting something.